welcome back. In this segment of our program, we welcome Donna Epps, our Director of Resident Life. And Donna is here to talk to us about hospice. Yes, I am. And what do we have to say about hospice this morning, Donna? Well, uh, last night, all of the, the residents um, received in their cubby an, an announcement. It's a, a difficult one, but our hospice agency is going to be closing. And why are we closing? Well, therefore, um, there are several reasons. Um, as most people may know, um, Green Spring Hospice is the only hospice agency in all of Erickson Living. Okay. And so there was a decision made that we were not going to be expanding hospice services into the other communities. Um, and it's just really hard from a scale perspective to support one agency. And there are also, you know, four other um, hospices that service Fairfax County as well. So within Fairfax County, there are four other hospice agencies. Yes. And, so and there, there is hospice support available yes, for residents. Absolutely. It's not like we're leaving our residents without hospice support. That is very true. As a matter of fact, um, some of our, our residents have already chosen um, you know, to have their services provided by some of the other hospice agencies. And that's always been the case um, because residents do have to be given a choice of hospice programs. Um, so we do have other hospices that were already providing services so, to the community. So even now, if a resident was ready for hospice care, we didn't, they weren't forced to use Green Springs Hospice. Absolutely. Um, hospice is a regulated um, industry, just like our certified home health, mm -hmm. just like um, in, in Garden Ridge, they have to follow um, federal and state regulations. The hospice um, agency comes under similar um, regulatory requirements and one of those requirements is that um, patients do have to be given a choice of available hospices. So they've always had that choice. So Green Springs said this is something that our residents can easily find this service here in Fairfax County this is something that we, Greenspring, are not going to try to do on our own. Right, um, exactly, because there is a lot of support that is um, required. I'm going back to the the regulatory sure. requirements, the the auditing, and you know taking care of the residents. And so um, the message is too is that all of our patients who are currently uh, receiving services from Green Spring Hospice, um, the staff will work with them to make the transition to the hospice that they and their family members choose, and that process is already going on. So they're going to continue to receive hospice care? Yes. They're not going to notice a big change? No, they should not. Right. Exactly. Okay. And, and, our, and our team will be um, very intimately involved with that transition. Okay. Um, we have spoken with not just the um, the patients but with their family members uh, as well so uh, as of yesterday um, all of our patients were were notified we actually uh, talked to the staff last week um, and as a team they decided that they wanted to be part of having the conversation with the patients and the family members because they are the faces that they see sure. um, this also gave the staff time to digest everything and I just want to say that the hospice team of seven people we have um, three nurses uh, a, a social worker an office coordinator and two um, hospice aides mm -hmm. and they have been absolutely wonderful and as they always do their primary concern has been for their patients that's wonderful and so it it has really been um, made a difficult situation a little bit um, easier of a pill to swallow if you will and those were very difficult conversations sure. um, it's a difficult time for family members, a difficult time for patients, but I'm sure that, that all of the hospice organizations in Fairfax County have a similar level of caring yes. for their patients yes. as does our organization here at Greenspring. Right. Absolutely. And part of the notification process is that we did um, reach out to the four hospice agencies mm -hmm. to let them know 
what we were doing um, and in the um, notification to the family members and to the patients, they were given a list of the available um, hospices and we are also providing um, information about those hospices and we are available to answer any of their questions. Now, um, I know that, that one of our hospice services was that for people, for the family members of families, of patients who had passed, that there is still follow-on counseling available. Yes. What about that service? That will also continue. Um, likely one of the new hospices will take over. What you're referring to is the um, bereavement yes. program or, or the bereavement services that hospice does, does offer, and that will uh, continue, and that will likely be transitioned over to one particular um, hospice. We don't know which one yet, but all of the services that come with um, um, hospice will continue to be provided. Comes under the umbrella of greater hospice. Yes. Just from a different agency. Yes, absolutely. So no one is going to be left without the hospice services that they have always had. That is absolutely correct. And I'm sure that, that a, a concern of anyone here is going to be what about our employees who worked in our hospice facility, what will happen to them in their employment? Right, well, um, their last day for six of the seven will be February 9th. Mm -hmm. um, we do have open positions on campus um, and we've already started those discussions with them as well. And um, many of them still want to remain Green Spring um, employees. Mm -hmm. um, we have already been contacted by some of the hosp hospice agencies because um, they would like to form a, a relationship with them as well if that's that employee's choice. Um, and then if there's not an opportunity that they want to um, avail themselves of here on campus or if there's not um, an, an opening that meets their qualifications, um, we do have um, severance packages uh, available based upon their years of service. And we have several employees in the hospice program who have been here for many, many years. We have two who've been here for 15 years even. Mm -hmm. I would have a feeling that, that with the skills that they have built up here that, that they will be either choose to stay here or will be, be pulled up by another hospice right. organization as, as being well skilled and, yes. and be of value to either Green Spring or to some other yes, organization. Absolutely. Right. Excellent. I was looking here at the at the other list that you gave us. Um, of anything else that we would want to discuss. One thing that someone else mentioned to me was that if, if you are out of state, let's say that, and the, an example given to me was that, let's say, I was using hospice services for a parent who died in another state mm -hmm. and that I could take advantage of hospice counseling here relative to the parent who died in another state. Have you ever heard of that? You know, I am not the, the hospice expert, but but the, the person's um, originating um, hospice would be the best way to um, answer that question because you do have some hospice agencies that are are national uh, yeah. agencies and have a presence in, in multiple states. Yeah, it said that, that this person said that there was some, I guess, just national hospice wide. Right, there are. Yeah, absolutely. There was some, some, I, I know there's a word for that, but some, some um, Multi, yeah, yes. there, there's some some multi-state yes. hospice organizations. Right. Yes. So, so really, that would be have to have to be handled on a case by case right. basis. Yes, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, a big change, but certainly yes. understandable as to why that change has been made. Yes, it is. But I personally want to thank all of the hospice team because they have been instrumental in this being a as smooth of a process and as smooth of a communication as um, it could be. They have really stepped up in the face of knowing that their jobs were going away, um, but they have been just great to continuing to provide to work service. with. Yes, and and we will continue to provide services until all of the um, the patients have been transitioned to their new hospice of choice. So let's let's ask one other question, and this is an all important question: If we have a resident here at Green Spring who is entering a, a phase of life where hospice care is 
seeming to be the next step. Mm -hmm. How would that person make a contact to a hospice organization through his or her doctor or? It can be through their doctor, it can be through their, their social worker because we actually have um, hospice patients in independent living as well as in Garden Ridge. Okay. And the um, social worker is still considered a, um, a navigator okay. during that process, but their primary care physician would also be involved in okay. that decision and they would have the same choices because those same four hospices do service um, Fairfax County, so rather than being referred to Green Spring Hospice at that time, okay. at this time. It's just a matter of who they'd be referred exactly. to. Exactly. Okay. Thank you for the information. You're welcome And so yes, much. you said we're, we will have some information in our cubbies about this. Yes, actually that information um, was placed in cubbies last night. Okay. So Good. if you haven't gotten your mail, you will get it today. Okay. And I do want to um, end by saying that um, we will be having a, um, a hospice closing reception of some type okay. um, because the uh, staff feel very strongly that yes. they want to really have um, a, a time where they can talk to families, talk to um, the residents here, meet with um, other staff and kind of say a more formal And I'm sure farewell. there are a lot of residents who would like yes. to thank them for yes. that.